Well, look who's here. Horanea. Guess we've got you to thank for this mess. More to it than meets the eye. You want to know who to thank? Come with me. <laughs> Can't wait to hear this. My word. Is that you, Prince Noctis? I, uh, yeah. Have we... Oh, blessed be the stars. Just look at what a fine young man you've grown into. I am Maria, a retainer in service to House Florey. I doubt you'll remember me after these long years. I, um, can't say I do. Don't worry. Who I am is of little import in light of what I wish to discuss. Lady Lunafreya risked everything to spirit the Ring of the Lucii away from the Citadel. Did she deliver it to you? Yeah. Stars above! My fears have been assuaged. Lord Ravis too will be overjoyed to hear this news. Ravis too. Accept it. By your hand, it must be done. To deliver the ring and inspire the king is your calling. You mustn't fall. But I lack the strength to go on. Find it, Luna Freya. You have the will. Go to Noctis. Show him the truth of your heart. I understand you will go hence to the Imperial Capital. Yeah. Lord Ravis has King Regis's glaive in his safekeeping, and it was his wish to return it to you, my prince. Though I imagine it will not be easy for you to find each other. I'll get it from him somehow. I pray it shall be so. Prince Noctis! Yeah? Prince Noctis, were... were you excited to marry Lady Luna Freya? Because she was really excited to marry you. She looked so happy the day her dress arrived. She really loved you, Prince Noctis. I... <sighs> Thank you. At first, the father had mourned the fate of his chosen son. Yet in Tenebrae, the two found solace. It was not the Oracle who assuaged their fears. But the girl, she holds the true power. I have little to offer a king other than the voice afforded the Oracle. Nevertheless, and I'm afraid you might find this foolish. But, to be together with Noctis again, even if only for a short while, it would mean the world to me. I do not seek to guide him, 
merely to stand beside him. Lady Lunafreya worried she was burdening you with the wedding. That's not true, is it? No, not at all. Don't worry about the civilians. They're in my good hands. Can't say the same for you. Watch yourselves in the capital. We will. <laughs> Thanks, Aranea. We'll see you around. It's... snowing. Get your ass on board! Yes, sir. Snow. No wonder it's so cold in here. We must be approaching the Glacian's cadaver. Won't be a blessing if all we got's a body. Let us hope we pass through the gorge without incident. It's what's after the gorge I'm worried about. <sighs> hey, knocked! <sighs> what's up? You better get in here. Something's got not it. right. Come on, Iggy. in a sack. Right. No way. You! Hold it! Oh, that son of a bitch. What the hell? I will.
The Six have safeguarded this star since time immemorial. Each of a different mind, but united by this common purpose. The God's protection extends to all creatures here below, even to the mortals created in their image. They are feeble creatures leading fragile lives and clinging to foolish fancies. The Frostbearer scorns these visions of hope, which melt like snow in the sun's light. Yet the Pyreburner admires their strength of will. For their reverence, he grants unto them his flame, and the world of man flourishes. His benevolence warms the frozen heart of the Frostbearer. The mortals have earned her respect, he, her love and admiration. It is not long, however, before some among those men ascend to new heights of hubris. The people of Solheim scorn the gods who bless them, the gods they once worshipped. The ungrateful mortals incur the wrath of the pyre burner. He seeks to raise the very civilization his friends once helped build. But the six are sworn to defend the star and all her inhabitants from harm. And, at times, from one another. The flames of war surge as Solheim fends off the pyre burner's fire. The gods' pleas for peace fall on deaf ears and the battle rages on. When the smoke clears, the world of man is in ruins. Their star left scarred for time eternal. Wearied from war, the six seek solace in slumber. This tale of our shared past is entrusted to the King of Kings. That he may see it to its conclusion. The Oracle is no longer of this world, but her thoughts remain and they must be known. When the boy begins his existence on this star, the girl is met by the High Messenger. It is ordained that she will work with him to return the light. The girl reaffirms that promise. The High Messenger is moved by the girl's determination, her heart warmed by the girl's benevolence. Her faith in mankind is restored once more. Sister, cease this madness. That boy will never be king. Noctis is chosen. It is ordained. You of all people should know. I know that you are throwing your life away. That may be. But it's my choice. If only... <laughs> If only I could hear his voice once more. If we could laugh together as we did as children. <laughs> if we could live out our days together as we once dreamed. Wherefore does the lady weep? Forgive me. I vowed to only cry where prying eyes cannot see the tears in mine. Yet others need not hide their grief. Is she so different from them? No. She is no different at all. She wants exactly what they do. To be with the one she loves. But want though she may. It is not to be. The lady's thoughts have been hurt. The love she bears the king shall never fade. And, in time, her feelings shall be known unto him. Gentiana. And if the words are not spoken from her lips, then the messenger shall see that they are heard. The god's favor and the lady's love shall be with him evermore. Thus it is promised between the Oracle and her familiar.
Be there for you. Not even when you needed me most. There was so much you wanted to say. So much I wanted to say. And now I'll never have the chance. I'm so sorry. you down. I know you won't. the Glacian. It's okay. She's gone now. You guys check out our drivers. Got it. You good? Yes, I'm fine. Let's go. I've earned the right to call you not. For a moment I felt death's chill wind. Such is the might of the gods. But then I remembered I'm immortal. Such is my blessing and curse. Your attack hurt me nevertheless. My feelings at least. And after all the memories we've shared, remember this. Ah, I should have asked if you remember him. Truly a blast from the past. Nay. Ah, ah, ah. You mustn't take what's not yours. Where is he? He. <laughs> the little gunman's a short shot away. Where? Where else but Gralia, the seat of the Empire. I'm sure he'll be delighted to see you. And you might even find your crystal. With all these demons about, you could certainly use it. <laughs> Off you go then. 
I wouldn't want to keep you from your friend. 